Welcome to Squad 44, the best tank game on the market. It's complex, it's immersive, and it's mostly realistic. With a game with an armored combat system as in-depth as this, it's no surprise that not everybody understands mechanics. After all, our old dev team spent almost an entire year developing the systems and details I'll be explaining to you today. Armored combat is a truly amazing experience. Thrills, screaming, panic, everything you could ask for. Rear, rear, rear! We got it on top of us, it's yeah, a stag yeah, hound, rear. Uh, never mind, it's deleted. And the way I see it, the only way to make it more fun is unmasking the veil, spreadsheeting the shit out of it, and explaining every small detail of how everything works until there's no mystery and you realize it's incredibly easy to conquer the system. After all, the only thing more powerful than the 8.8 centimeter Kampfwagen Cannon 36 is information. We're going to assume you already know the basics, but here's some advanced controls that I find many players don't know about. On some tanks, periscopes are rotatable. This allows you to help spot for enemies, but additionally, as the gunner, it allows you to avoid moving the turret, and you can shoot from the periscope. This is important because moving the turret makes it difficult for the commander to see, and when enemy infantry are on top of your tank, you can see them a lot easier. As the gunner, it is also possible to change the turret's traverse speed. This will allow you to get much more accurate shots off at long range. Drivers can also minimize or maximize their RPM by double tapping W or S. Let's talk about tank spawns. Tanks are spawned via decks. There are six decks for each category on most maps. Every time a map is loaded, a random deck from each category is chosen from the pool. Next up, we will talk about the different types of shells. In game, shells act roughly how you'd expect them to in real life. AP, APC, and APCBC are all similar shells. These are solid pieces of metal designed to penetrate enemy armor. The C and BC variants are better at the job, offering more velocity and better penetration values. APCR and HVAP are the same shell. These are smaller pieces of two metals, a very strong solid core and a lighter body. These shells are very good at penetrating armor, but suffer from an increased chance to ricochet at high angles. Generally, these are your second best rounds. APDS is the best round in the game currently. It is a small core of metal with a thin casing that discards after the shell is fired. It is extremely good at penetrating armor, but has an even worse chance to ricochet. In-game, all of these rounds affect the tank in similar ways. For an AP round entering the tank, spalling is created that shoots out from the impact point in a cone. When spalling or the shell hits a crew member or component, that object will receive damage. An additional cone of spalling is created if the round overpens the tank and impacts the opposite side. Next we have the explosive rounds. High explosive is self-explanatory. It's best at killing infantry and trucks, but APHE and its variants APCHE and APCBCHE are rounds designed to penetrate the armor of a tank and then explode on the inside. Similar to AP, they create a much smaller cone of spalling when entering but instead of the shell continuing inside the tank, it explodes, creating an additional cloud of shrapnel at the entry point. This shrapnel has an increased chance to start fires if it impacts the engine or fuel tanks. For some reason, in-game, APHE tends to be less effective than AP. There are many theories as to why this is, but when you can use solid shot instead of HE, APHE can also be used against infantry and will penetrate walls, but it'll be less effective than high explosive. Heat is a shell that, when it impacts a tank, shoots a tiny stream of molten copper inside the tank. This is simulated as a straight line from the impact point straight into the tank. Unlike other rounds, it does not lose any penetration value over distance, and slopes have no effect on its penetration value. Air gaps and spaced armor, however, will defeat this round. It also unfortunately ricochets extremely easily. Lastly, there are two more letters, T being Tracer and I being Incendiary, which just means it's more likely to cause fires. Next up, we have the components. First, we have the engine. The engine, when damaged, will cause your maximum RPMs to be reduced. There is also a chance to catch fire when destroyed. Next is the transmission, which when damaged will reduce your maximum gear. Tracks also allow the tank to move. When one track is destroyed, you will only be able to rotate the tank. All of these affect your mobility, and when destroyed will stop your tank from moving. In the turret, we have the cannon, which when destroyed means you will not be able to fire. We also have the turret ring, which when damaged slows the movement of the turret. 
Lastly, we have the ammo and fuel tanks. When the ammo is destroyed, the tank explodes. Additionally, ammo can be set on fire, which cannot be put out and will kill the tank after a delay. Ammo detonation is also modified by the amount of ammo in your tank. If you've fired every shot, you cannot be ammo detonated. When the fuel tank is destroyed, there is no effect. However, impacts have a fair chance to start a fire. Fires are quite interesting. When a fire starts, it will slowly grow in size. When the fire becomes big enough, it will spread to nearby components, damaging them and repeating the process. This will continue until fire spreads to the ammo box, at which point the tank will be destroyed. I can't believe it! They destroyed my beautiful tiger! The simplest way to kill a tank is to detonate the ammo rack. This can be easy if you have the element of surprise on enemy armor. Next, destroying three critical components will destroy an enemy tank. This means destroying either three of the engine, turret ring, cannon, or transmission. Another method is to burn out the tank by igniting the fuel or engine. This is often the best option for anti-tank infantry. Lastly, all tanks have a hull health point value depending on their classification. This health is used for hull breaks. If a shell or a piece of spalling penetrates the hull, travels through the tank, and impacts the interior wall, then this HP pool is reduced. Hull breaks are common on all tanks, but most often impact tanks from the recon deck, as these tanks have nearly one-fourth of the health as others. Sometimes shells can be impacted by external pieces of armor as well as internal pieces of armor. For an example, an APHE shell or a heat shell impacting the side of a Panzer IV can detonate before it enters the hull. This is because the Panzer IV has skirts that create a gap between the projectile and the armor. On Shermans, you'll often see logs or tracks bolted onto the side of the tank. This has a similar effect, offering one-time protection against these types of weapons. Inside the tank, components can often block shells and shrapnel from going further. Engines provide values of up to 1000 millimeters of armor on the heaviest of tanks, and the wall that separates the engine from the crew compartment also offers up to 200 millimeters of protection from shells. Anyways, that's pretty much it mechanics-wise. All of this information has come directly from the devs, either through their blog posts, change logs, or showcase videos, and also some lovely people with years of experience playing armor, or have created their own tanks via modding tools. If you're now thinking, all of this info is great, but I don't know where each component is located inside the tank, and I don't know where to shoot, then you're in luck, because not only does the game have a built-in armor school which lets you see the internals and armor of every tank, but I've also taken the time to create screenshots of every single tank in the game so you can use it as a mid-game reference. This, along with all of my sources, the dev blogs, and their showcases will be available to you in the description of this video. If you're a tank fan, I highly recommend checking them out, because seeing how it all works behind the curtains is amazing and really makes you appreciate just how much work has gone into making the armored systems this game employs.